guys, welcome back to The Bright Side. Macy here, The Bright Side Girl, and today I am doing my Mermaid Marathon wrap up. So this is going to include all of the books that I read or listened to that were mermaid related in some way in June and July. If you guys don't know about my mermaid marathon, I will link the video down below with recommendations and things like that because even though it's over, you can always read more mermaid books. Just so you guys know, I'm not going to go into a ton of descriptions or details about these books because I've already done that in my June and July wrap ups, but we're going to do just a little brief synopses and brief what I thought and then carry on. First up, I'm going to start off listing the books that I physically read that were mermaid related, and then I'll go into the audiobooks that I read that were mermaid related. And just so you guys know, I have all of the narrators and all the links to all of these books in my June and July wrap ups if you're interested in knowing them because they were great. The first mermaid book that I physically read was To Kill a Kingdom by Alexandra Christo. This one was a new mermaid book release that came out this year, which was so exciting because there were so many wonderful new mermaid books that came out this year and that hasn't happened in a while, and they were all really good, which is awesome. I really, really liked this one. I think it was just slightly overhyped. As a person that reads a lot of mermaid books, I thought this one was excellent. It was a solid book. I really enjoyed it, but it wasn't like mind-blowing or crazy overly unique or anything like that. It was a Little Mermaid retelling. In my opinion, it was a loose Little, Merm Little Mermaid retelling, and it was also considered a uh, darker mermaid book. In my opinion, it was not a dark mermaid book compared to some of the other ones that I've read, but I really enjoyed it. I had a great time. We have a siren princess that kills princes and a prince that kills sirens and they both kind of meet and things occur so that's really fun. It was an excellent book between a 3.5 and a 4 star for me. I'll, I will be purchasing it in the future and I really enjoyed it. Then I read the Undertow trilogy and so there's Undertow, The Raging Sea, and Heart of the Storm. And I super enjoyed this trilogy overall. This one was very, very unique. So this is about like an apocalyptic future where mer creatures, mer people, sea folk come from the sea and just inhabit Coney Island. And so this causes a whole change in that area and things kind of get run down. And then there are groups that are against the, the mer people and there are groups that are for them and some of them are violent and some of them are not. So there's just a whole bunch of things happening. Um, it's not super like mermaid-esque because a lot of the creatures are not like mer people with tails and whatnot. And it is kind of about incorporating these people into the everyday life and like it's got a little bit of a dystopian vibe to it. Very different, very action oriented. If you're a true super mermaid lover, you might not like it because it doesn't have the same vibe as the other mermaid books that I'm about to talk about, but it was a really fun, excellent read. I think I gave most of the books 3.5 to 4 stars. Next up, I read Siren by Trisha Rayborn. I loved this one so much. I'm really bummed because it's part of a trilogy and the next two books are really hard to find, but it was really excellent. It had a mystery aspect. This one is set in an East Coast village and um, our lead character's sister winds up dying and there's all this mystery around it and she's not really sure. Everyone thinks that her sister, like, killed herself, but she doesn't really think that. And so she winds up going back to her Summerside home where the murder happened and talking with some friends and doing some investigating of her own. So this one has a small, like, light mystery aspect to it. It has more of the siren thing going on, obviously, than the mermaid thing, but we do have, like, some folklore in here. It's slightly different than other ones that I have read. The ending was really excellent and I gave this one four stars. Then I read Lies Beneath by Anna Greenwood Brown. This is the first, again, of a trilogy. I, this was my least favorite of all the mermaid things that I've read and listened to, but it is told from a male perspective. So it is about Calder White and his sisters and they are mer people and they are able to go from land to sea to lake to sea to land and all that kind of stuff. And they have a mission to fulfill a curse that her their mother placed when she was alive but wasn't able to follow through with and they feel like it's their duty to like carry it out. And there's like some romance in here and mystery and you know, they're in a small seaside town I think in but I think it's in like Michigan, so it's more of a lakeside town. 
Anyway, um, I liked a lot of things about this, but I didn't really like Calder, and he bothered me, and I also didn't like the main plot, which was kind of sad. I felt like it was kind of far-fetched and really didn't make a lot of sense. I think I gave this one 3.5 stars. I bumped it up half a star because the ending was really good, so I will continue on with the series, but this was my least favorite. Next up, I read Daughter of the Pirate King and Daughter of the Siren Queen. This one has just some mermaid folklore and a little bit of mermaidish stuff in it. The second book has a lot more of it, so they're kind of a loosely based mermaidy book, <laughs> more pirate nautical themed. So of course we have our daughter of the Pirate King and her dad is like brutal and has taught her to be a fierce warrior and she goes kind of on a mission for him and she meets more pirates along the way and friendships happen and war happens and she has an all female ship and it's just so good and the second one is really good too. I gave this one I think 4.5 stars because I loved it. It was such a fast fun read. Second one I gave four stars. I loved it almost as much. It was just really excellent. Really funny. Our witty banter and the romance in here was super excellent so I really enjoyed that as well. And lastly I read Peter Pan by J.M. Barrie. I don't think I've ever physically read this. Loved it. Of course. Beautiful. Classic fairy tale. Of course, there are just mermaids in here. It's not the main focus, but they were fun to read about. It's very similar to the Disney movie and Hook, so that was good and reminiscent, and I just, I had a great time reading it. It was a quick read. Um, I have this, like, beautiful book with Neverland and all that kind of stuff, and I've been reading a lot of Peter Pan retellings lately, so that's been awesome. I really, really enjoyed it. So those are all the mermaid books that I physically read this year. I didn't really physically read as many as I thought that I did, but I listened to a ton, so we're going to jump into the audiobooks, and I'm first going to start off with the books that I reread via audiobook. So I started off listening to A Monstrous Beauty by Elizabeth Fama. I read this one last year or two years ago and I was kind of iffy about it because it kind of scared me. Um, but I listened to it on audiobook and had a whole new appreciation for it. The audiobook narrator was excellent. It does have some trigger warnings for some sexual assault and rape in here. Just very minor but just so you know. Um, but really excellent, brilliantly written. It's told from two different perspectives, so we get some like 1800s mermaid perspective, and also present tense, um, our lead character Hester and her family ties in somehow with the story from the mermaid and you're kind of figuring that out so this one has a mystery aspect to it as well. There are creepy things in here. It is a little bit um, graphic on the like kind of gory details. Nothing major because it's still a YA book but the way everything ties together and everything happens is so great. The folklore is awesome and I really really loved it and I have a book talk for this one that I will link below also. And I gave Monstrous Beauty 4.5 stars this time around. Then I reread via audiobook The Siren by Kiara Cass. The narrator for this one was not my favorite, but she was decent enough that I wanted to continue on. I love Kiara Cass's writing style. There's some weird things in here <laughs> with like the ocean's perspective and stuff like that. We have our lead character whose parents die on a cruise ship and she winds up falling overboard and the ocean saves her to become a siren slash mermaid. And so she um, is fulfilling her duty as a siren for a certain number of years and then she gets to go free but she'll lose all of her memories. So that's just a brief synopsis. I have more in my June audiobook wrap up and also I have a full book talk on this one and I'll link that down below as well. But the second time around I still gave this one 3.5 stars. Then I listened to Atlantia by Ali Condi. This one is narrated by Rebecca Solaire. I was so excited when I found that out because this is one of my favorite books ever and one of my favorite like sireny books. I love Rebecca Solaire as well. She did such an excellent job. So this one is set in an underwater world called Atlantia. We are in the future where things above on Earth have gone awry, of course, and are not doing so well. The air is tainted and people are dying and so we have created this underwater world called Atlantia. I think over half of us have gone to live down below and the rest stay above and keep things functioning for down below so that their families can live and be happy. And then the people in Atlantia can decide at a certain time of their life whether they want to stay in Atlantia or whether they want to go to the above. And our lead character has always wanted to go to the above, but she has decided not to for her family's sake. And so they're going to this special ceremony and then something happens. This one does not have like mermaids with tails swimming around, but it does have sirens in it. So if you like that kind of sireny, you know, control people with your voice thing, 
this it has it in there. The world of Atlantia is so cool to read about and it's like almost a utopian world which is really fun. Our lead character Rio goes on this quest to figure out how to get to the above and oh it's just really good. Also have a book talk on this one. I will link it down below. And I gave Atlantia 4.5 stars the second time around. Then I listened to Lost Voices, Waking Storms, and Twice Lost on audio. This is my favorite mermaid series, so Lost Voices here by Sarah Porter. Oh, this is just such a good series. It's just my absolute favorite. I had such a good time. This was like my third or fourth time reading it and my first time listening to it. The narrator was decent for how the story was. Again, not my absolute favorite, but I was she grew on me the longer I listened to the books. Ah, they're just so good. This is about like girls that become mermaids and friendship, saving the ocean and the planet, and there's a little bit of romance, and there's drama, and there's people finding out that there are mermaids, and things like that are going on. and. Oh, it's so good. The romance in here, not so great, so don't go into it for that, and I don't even think it occurs until the second book, but the way that they become mermaids and the friendships and all of the adventures that happen and the mermaid folklore and backstory and all that stuff is just so unique and so wonderful. It is very dark. Oh my gosh, I loved it so much. It's just one that I keep reading again and again and it's not like talked about enough. So I gave Lost Voices, I think 4.5, Waking Storms 4.5, and Twice Lost 5 stars, something like that. So oh, those are all of the books that I reread via audiobooks. So for the other audiobooks I listened to, I started out the whole Mermaid Marathon listening to, of course, The Little Mermaid by Hans Christian Andersen. It is a very short, like, two-hour audiobook. The narrator is fabulous for this one. I gave it 4.5 stars just because the ending is very strange, like the very, very ending is very odd. <laughs> but it is heartbreaking. It is not your Little Mermaid story that you are used to. And Disney took a lot of stuff from this um, and has that in the story that we're all used to, but there is definitely darker things that happen in the story about um, a Little Mermaid that discovers a prince and wants to go on land and talks to a sea witch and gets some legs and... <sighs> It's beautiful and it's the basis for a lot of mermaid books, so it's just one you gotta read. Then I listened to Mermaid by Carolyn Turgeon. I've been wanting to get to this one for a while and I finally did it. This one is the perfect one to follow up The Little Mermaid because it is a Little Mermaid retelling and it is the closest Little Mermaid retelling that I have found so far. So close that I almost didn't like it because it was so like Everything in The Little Mermaid was pretty much in Mermaid by Carolyn Turgeon with extra stuff, but we have two princesses, one on land and one in the sea that is a mermaid, and they kind of come together and they both fall in love with the same prince. It's about like love and romance, but it's also about like friendship and learning and growing up and <sighs> overcoming things and there's some war and just, I don't know, it's great. I wasn't as huge of a fan of the romancy part just because I thought that the prince was kind of stupid. <laughs> But I loved the like whimsical like romantic feel of the book and the way that it was written and it was just so beautiful and I recommend like I said listening to The Little Mermaid and then this one because they were just great. And I gave Mermaid by Carolyn Turgeon 4.5 stars. Then I listened to Tale of Emily Winsnap and Emily Winsnap and the Monster of the Deep on audiobook both read by Fenty Williams fabulous middle grade mermaid books. Was totally surprised how much I loved them. Such good true stories. There's adventure, there's mermaid school, there's friendship, there's growing up, there's learning things, there's magic. It is just, they're just adorable and fabulous and there's like six more books in the series and I plan to listen to those probably next summer. Then I listened to In Other Lands by Sarah Brees Renan. This one has mermaids in it. They're like mentioned a lot but you don't actually get a lot of mermaidiness until um, like midway or three quarters of the way through the book so don't go into this one for the mermaid aspect but there are mermaids in it so I counted it for mermaid marathon I really enjoyed it it's about our lead character Elliot and he starts out at 12 finding a magical wall that not everyone can see he gets whisked away over the wall into a magical land with elves and harpies and fairies and mermaids and everything galore and he grows up and makes friends he's very snarky and sarcastic and obnoxious <laughs> and it was awesome it was really really good um just a little bit of mermaid stuff in there though so keep that in mind and i gave in other lands 4.5 stars as well and lastly for audiobooks i listened to sea witch by sarah henning i finished this on like august 2nd but i'm gonna count it anyway because i just am 
It is a Little Mermaid retelling, but it is about the backstory of Ursula, our sea witch from the story, and it was absolutely amazing. It almost made it to my favorite mermaid book of all time. The audiobook was phenomenal. I couldn't stop listening to it. I listened to it when I went to sleep. I listened to it when I was doing everything. It is about a young girl and she has a friend that winds up dying when they're younger. And fast forward four years later, there, become, there comes this mysterious girl that she thinks is her friend but she's not sure and there's all this mystery around it so you're getting the time period you're getting little bits of what happened leading up to the accident and a little bit after um, from four years in the past and then four years in the future I think this is set like in the 1800 there's like a lot of nautical things that are happening there are two princes involved you got the two girls so there's like friendship and tragic things and there's some witch stuff in here and magic and folklore and oh it was so good i loved it so much and i gave a sea witch five stars so i read 20 mermaid books overall and i think about 13 or 14 were new to me i had such a great time i didn't get burnt out with mermaid books as fast as i did last year when i was doing it so i'll definitely do this again next year but i might shorten it to a month i'm not really sure I love almost anything mermaidy, so let me know down below in the comments if you guys have more suggestions so I can put them on my list for next year. I already have some kind of like piled up and <laughs> ready to go. But thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you guys participated, and I'll see you guys next time on the bright side. Bye!